What's up YouTube? This is Ken with Mantovani Racing. In my last video, I did a walk around of my Intec trailer over there. And I said I was gonna do a walk around of the Freightliner uh, Sport Chassis M2106 that I have to pull it. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a couple details about it, show you the inside, talk about the motor and so forth. And then I have a little bit of a special treat for you. That's right, another. M2106 sport chassis that has the cat diesel inside of it. So I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison of the uh, the different details between the two trucks. Um, this one happens to be a 2006 when uh, my original one is a 2007. So in any case, let's get started. Here we get, begin with the quick little walk around. A couple of key points is uh, they've got full size 22.5 tires on it. Uh, the nice part about the sport chassis is that this is an all aluminum bed with an all aluminum running boards. They, this is an optional box for the rear. They do a gooseneck and or a fifth wheel option. Uh, the reason I like sport chassis specifically is because of how they do their bed opposed to like the summit haulers they make this big trough that goes down the center and you have these big boxes that are built up over the sides and it kind of limits what you can do back here the hole in the center here actually look inside here they make this storage compartment and you can actually this centerpiece unscrews and then drops into place to give you a full a full deck Full solid deck to work from. Mud flaps. Underneath here you can see air ride suspension. I'm sure you can see that. They've got uh, manual dump valve uh, poles to manually dump. And there's also a switch inside. Now this has air parking brake. So since it has an engine air pump, they also have provisions for air so you can fill up tires here's your onboard battery charger got a couple little that's my toolbox for the trailers so you have your battery charger your tender here's your plug for your heat block heater they do a CV out here air horns Visor. Also, sport chassis. This nice air dam on the bottom there. I did upgrade my truck specifically to LED lights and fogs. Let's go ahead and jump under the hood. Hope it's not too windy in the microphone. Anyways, here's the MBE 900. This is a 330 horse, about 860 foot pounds of torque, I believe it is. So now there's a long debate that you can go on for days, weeks, years, talking about what's the better motor. Caterpillar, MBE, Mercedes. Cummings. Now, all the research I did, I spoke to a lot of people that also have these trucks, have this motor specifically, read the forums, everything I could to understand what was gonna be the better choice. And what I discovered about the MBE is this right here is your EGR cooler. And what these trucks tend to do is you, they, these, this cooler will leak and can actually leak fluid outside, which you'll see start to drip down the side of the block, or it'll start dumping it into the engine, which means you'll start losing coolant. If you start losing coolant 
don't just fill it back up. Discover why you're losing that coolant. And most of the time, it's that. And it's about $1,200 to put a new EGR cooler on there. And you're off to the races again. Other than that, everybody says they have very few problems with the MBE 900. Uh, they go forever. Now, these are also a lot of RV guys. You know, they're not putting a half a million miles on their trucks. Um, you know, there's a million of these trucks that are out there. So you have guys that are workhorsing them, but they talk about losing coolant. But if you send the coolant into the engine, well, problem is, is that you start diluting your oil and nice soft closed shocks for the hood. You start diluting the oil and then you route your bearings. There you go, 50 gallon, twin 50 gallon tanks on each side. Go step off to the inside here. Full deluxe interior. You see the door with the wood grain. Dash panel here. It's got a timer, which is your normal timer for a trucker. You're only allowed to drive 12 hours. Uh, if you the timer's not there and you have the a gauge, it's going to be the air gauge for your optional hitch. So it's a six speed Allison. I believe it's a 3200. Let's see here. There it is right there. Allison 3200, 330 horsepower. It's got a Pioneer. It's old, antiquated. It's the original 2007 that this truck is. I don't know if I said it was 2006 or 2007 earlier. Uh, it's got backup camera, backup camera switch. They have AV ports that you can have multiple cameras hooked up to the back of the truck and or the trailer. You can flip through those as you need to. Nice compartments up top. Nice headliner. Headphones back there. Flip down TV. And then I don't know if you can see this, but no, it's too bright out. But there are lights that light up along that trim panel up there. And then you have some fancy lights right here. Well, can't see. In any case, they do a nice center console here, all custom made, all specific sport chassis. CD changer. I haven't seen those in a long time. This is an air ride seat. Both sides are air ride. It has electric windows and locks. And then a nice little feature this truck has is the back seat folds down to a bed. So if you're out driving and hauling and you feel like just pulling over and taking a quick little nap, drop the back seat down, good to go. Pull it back up, get back on the road again. The truck happens to have a kill switch from the previous owner. Anyways, we shot from back here. I'll show you what all this looks like. Back AV ports and volume and 12 volt plug. You can actually see they even put some speakers back there so you can person in the back could be watching the TV, have outside speakers, do some gaming with the AV inputs back here. Anyways, all the door panels finished off really nice. So I'll give you a little story of why I chose this truck. So now I actually had a Kodiak and I was pulling my bumper pull with that and when I ordered that I thought it was just gonna be too much of a trailer for the Kodiak so I decided to step it up to the Freightliner and I actually had I actually in between that I had a toter home now the issue with the toter home is it's big it's long it's lumbering granted you have a place to sleep inside of it bathroom shower but I put all of that inside the trailer. So now I don't need any of that inside my truck. So this truck right here, it's wheelbase 
is just a little bit bigger than like an F450 say, which is 176 inches. This truck right here is 187 inches, so 11 inches over, which is not bad, which means that this truck can go in and out of parking spots like, I mean, just about like every other dually pickup truck. Uh, actually, they make a P2 version of this truck, which has a truck bed on the back, and it's even shorter. It's 174 inches, so it's just like a pickup truck. Now Kodiak has 169 inches, so it's even smaller. So it, you could almost daily that truck. So I chose this because I can unhook the trailer, go out to dinner if I want, load everybody up inside of it, park it where I need to. Assuming I can get to a parking spot where I can let the back hang off or the front hang over, then I pretty much don't stick out into the parking lot much at all. Uh, now people, are a little overwhelmed with the size when I pull into a parking spot. But other than that, it's no different, just a lot of volume. So that's kind of the backstory on why I decided to go with this truck. That and the fact that this truck has 330 horsepower, but it has 860 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, the Kodiak was only 300 horsepower with like 550 foot-pounds of torque. So big, big, big difference. Now this truck actually has the Caterpillar motor inside of it, which is 300 horse with 925 foot-pounds of torque. So when they're unloaded, this has got a little bit more get up and go. You kind of feel it lay you back in the seat a little bit more, but at the higher end, when you lay down the pedal, uh, it's not as much as this is. So slight differences. Now it's a matter of what your preference is gonna be. Um, also, these two trucks are both pre-emissions like true pre-emissions and I'm gonna show you so if you're looking at these trucks what to look for now you have a full pre-emissions truck so this right here is your exhaust now if this was a DPF truck which is the diesel particulate filter then you're gonna have a big like afterburner looking thing that's gonna have uh, some sensors and ports sticking out of it that's how you know you got a DPF truck and of course it has no DEF because there's no place to put the DEF inside of it. And uh, also I think they didn't come out with that until 2008 or nine, if I'm correct. Now here's some of the subtle differences with this truck. This is a 2006 and you can see the running boards are just a little bit different. See where they don't have a door that covers that cap. Over here, they kind of built it up a little higher. These do have air ride cab, so a little bit softer. This truck has a majority of the same features. It's got the toolbox option in the back, but it also has the fifth wheel option in the back. This is just something that bolts actually right over the ball. You can see the balls underneath there. You pull this pin right here out on both sides this head removes and then you have full access to the actual ball. So very easy to switch between fifth wheel and gooseneck on this truck. And that's that's pretty much a setup I see on all these. And or you might have a whole air ride apparatus, which is uh, gooseneck and or fifth wheel where you kind of just flip flop two heads off of it. But same setup inside of here, got your hose, you got you know your air hookup. Now this is kind of a split year 2006, so it has all of the same upgraded interior as my other 2007. I mean, same color, same everything. Obviously, the exterior is the same color. But in, two, in earlier 2006s, you might have had full wood interior, old school looking style, where the center console was just a small little wood setup, and you have the wood grain dash, like a bright wood grain. Um, I actually owned a black one in the midst, and I'm, I'll sit down and tell the story about about all of uh, the trucks I own, which in about 45 days, I owned about four of these trucks. <laughs> it's a great story in itself. But this has the Caterpillar. So here's the specs on the Caterpillar right here. So this has got a 3000 transmission, not a 3200. So differences, I, I don't know those specs necessarily. Um, the 
dial is a little different and the other truck the 3200 you actually have two dials here so this will actually say six to let you know that it's a six-speed transmission and then it'll be another dial next to it that tells you what gear you're in um, also this truck with the caterpillar motor has an ex has a a exhaust brake or actually i call it trans brake because that's really what it's doing it's just downshifting the truck for you is either on or off inside of my truck the other truck the 2007 these are both actually my trucks that has a double switch for higher or lower so the engine brake here i can go down center off and up aggressive so it's got it's got more, more settings which is really nice when you're caught hauling the bigger trailer that you have those multiple options to be able to do that got to mention you got a cobra cb both of them same setup there's even a little speaker up in the roof that you can hear it but we'll walk over here and pop the hood on this one give you a look at the the caterpillar now this is a cat 7 and again there's debates on the cat 7 not being that good of a motor but i think it gets a bad rap because the cat 7 also came out with a c7 s which is the one that has emissions because caterpillar stopped doing over the road motors around this time period so this is a true raw zero emissions motor <clears throat> there's nothing on this <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> that has emissions but <clears throat> the only bad part about these motors they talk about is this pump the fuel pump i think it's called a huey if i'm correct it's all pressurized by the oil pressure and if you have bad oil or old oil it could weaken your fuel pump cause issues but as for the most part it's caterpillar fantastic motor very low issues with it lower horsepower than the mbe 900 <clears throat> but what i like about this motor is you can see your alternator and your AC compressor are whips right on top. Easy access, easy changeability. Um, the black 2006 that I had that had the Caterpillar motor in it, I actually had a bad AC condenser, which was really easy to replace. Just ripped off a few, you know, pulled off the grill and then uh, it was able to slide everything, the rip off, take off the, uh, the turbocharged intercooler and pull right out the condenser, pop the back in, it was a real fast actual process and if you had to replace that it's sitting up there on top unfortunately on the mbe 900 it's down there in between the rails which is a lot harder to get to just an observation that i made but these trucks again 225s all aluminum running boards so these are the subtle differences between a 2006 And the 2007 there's also a little bit of a grill difference too i think if you notice right there that this secondary piece right here you can see it does not have that on this truck so uh there's your ac condenser kind of extends all the way down here and then comes up about midway over here your ac condensers all the way up here and then goes up the grill and this is wide open down here with some tilt hooks. Fog lights looks like one of my lights has some water moisture in it. But in any case, hope that uh, gives you some insight on the different style trucks between at least these two years, Caterpillar and MBE. I'm not here to debate the differences on the better or the worse truck or motor specifically. The trucks are the identical the same. It's now just a matter of whether you prefer the Caterpillar because you're a cat man or you're just definitely afraid of Mercedes. Now I've fully serviced this truck myself. You go down to the Freightline dealership, you buy all the parts that you want to, no more expensive than buying the full service parts for the Caterpillar motor. So can't really say that one's going to cost you more than the other i do understand that your 
the EGR cooler on this truck is $1,200 and that's something you're gonna have to maintain the EGR when you don't have to do it to the cat. But it's just what you have to deal with. All of them have their nuances. Uh, trucks do obviously have a bumper pull hitch. There's your specs on the capacity of your truck. Oh, back here, I forgot to mention, this is where your port is that you can plug. It's, all the trucks are wired with Voyager uh, camera outlets. So you can plug that in into your trailer so you can have a camera in your trailer and behind your trailer. And then I added one, you can see it underneath here. So for backing up along with the camera already factory for the gooseneck and those are some extra add-on lights backup lights but uh so that's it so click subscribe comment complain make your notes down below let me know what you think and if you got any questions that i can maybe help answer i'll be happy to go ahead and do that uh, the best i can so anyways Check back for updates on the Miata. That should be back here pretty soon. And also this weekend, we're going to be racing Champ Car at the 12, the 14 hours of Sebring. And we'll probably do some live updates from that too. So anyways, check me later. See ya.